Good evening Periscope, it's 10pm, we could not be more on time tonight, bang on. Um, welcome to uh, Wednesday, no, I forgot what day it was, Wednesday night's Periscope, which means tonight it is Book Club, um, who are all these people joining, Sam's joined, someone else quickly joined before that, good evening Sam, Sam's not been on for a while, she's back and she's incredibly excited, Barvu, not seen you for ages either, Barvu's back, good to uh, see you, Warren, it was Warren who joined, uh, Warren good evening mate, Kim's in the house, that means Kim and Sam, Double trouble, they're here. Um, let's give people a few minutes to join, as per as per usual. I'll do my little spiel that I do at the same same point in every Periscope I've ever done. I just saw Lee here, Vishal here, good evening as well. Um, for those who don't know me, my name's Ross, I'm an actor, voiceover artist from Manchester in the UK. Scope twice a week, and this is the first scope you've watched, or so whether you're watching on the replay for the first time. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, I scope twice, once on a Monday, once on a Wednesday at 10 p.m. UK time. Um, I know there's some people from the States who join us, but yeah, 10 p.m. UK time. Um, and on a Monday, we do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks, which is kind of like little life hacks, things that can help you stay more motivated, be more productive, get further in your life faster. On a Wednesday, which is tonight, uh, we do a book club, and we look at one book a month for four consecutive weeks. We read a chapter every week. Uh, e Edward is here. Good evening, Edward. Um, and, uh, and then if you want to read the rest of the book, obviously you can go and buy it. Um, but this is a way for you to kind of get a sneak peek at a book that's going to enhance your life or your acting career. Tonight is particularly your acting career. I am plugged in, Kim. I've got my coffee and uh, I've got the book. <laughs> and I'm on aeroplane mode, yeah. Um, so yeah, tonight is, we're looking at a brand new book, guys, because it's May. Um, it is the 4th of May, so this is going to be the book for May. I did a podcast with the author of this book just about a week ago. Um, and... He's a top bloke, really, really good, like, just good egg. He's one of LA's top acting coaches. He doesn't prescribe to an awful lot of the bullshit that's in the acting industry. He just says it as, you know, as it is. We're kind of uh, on the same page, brothers from another mother. And this is his book. It's called Book the King Job. Um, there'll be no swearing on these scopes because uh, they're PG, yeah? They're, they're, although it is past the watershed, isn't it? And I do swear all the time. <laughs> but there won't be any F-bombs. Never drop the F-bomb. Um, but you've missed the reminder, says Kim. Oh, for, for being plugged in. I have Kim. Kim's like always my, reminding me to plug my iPhone in when I'm doing these periscopes because there's been a couple of times where I've forgotten and then the scope's just cut out halfway through. We don't want that to happen at all. Um, so this book, for those who haven't got a clue and you've not listened to the podcast that I've already done with, uh, with Anthony, um, it's, a, it's a book that answers lots and lots of the most common questions that actors have asked Anthony throughout his career as an actor and an acting coach. Um, he's a bit of a personal development guru as well. Um, does a lot of kind of you know similar stuff to what I do in terms of relating personal development to acting. Neither of us look at acting as a separate you know part of, of our lives. It's literally like you know your acting career, who you are as an actor is very much ingrained in who you are as a human being. The better you can build, well, the, the better version of yourself you can build, um, the better you know, actor in yourself you can build. Um, so the questions that, that he answers in this book is split into three sections, guys. It starts with the head, and that's all the questions that we ask ourselves in our, well, in our head. <laughs> um, then there's uh, questions from the heart, so things that can be a little bit trickier. And then there's um, questions from the industry which are a bit more industry related, they're a bit more factual, um, I guess. But things like, you know, it starts off like, how do I develop a character? These are all quite, you know, common acting questions. How do I know how far I need to go before it becomes melodramatic? Um, what am I so scared of? How do I work with my agent during pilot season? What do I do if I get nervous in front of a casting director? Do I have talent? Uh, what's the number one thing I need more of in my life and work? There's some classics in here though, like, what? how do I, how do I do a romantic scene when I have a girlfriend or boyfriend? <laughs> Stuff like that where your girlfriend or your boyfriend's going to be like, uh, wait a minute, you look like you're enjoying that way more than you should have been. I'm just acting, just acting, love, just acting. Um, so there's some, uh, there's some great ones in there. Uh, what do you mean by fake it till I make it? How do I deal with a scene I'm uncomfortable with? Why do I stop breathing? That's definitely one. I've, I've experienced that like earlier on in my acting career going, also, not why do I stop breathing during a scene, but why why do I like why do my arms suddenly become my hands like two big blocks of like lead on the end of these things that just Ugh, what do I do? With my, I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, I thought you were going to say what, do you, what if you had bad breath? No, if you stop breathing, well, if you have bad breath in a romantic scene, that would be bad as well, Kim. 
So maybe that's that's for a second book of Anthony's. Tonight, we're going to... Uh, Kim says she totally stops breathing as well. I think it's when we start thinking, Kim, we just... Our, our reptilian brain gives up. That's the brain that looks after the thinking. We get more into our mammalian brain, deals with... Uh, the, uh, reptilian looks after breathing, mammalian looks after thinking. And it just takes over and we start panicking. I've got them in a scene and we go, oh my God, you've, you've even you've got to breathe. <sighs> Mental, just had to take a bit deep breath then. Right, um, we're going to look at like the first question in the book. Um, because I love his answer to this question. And I hope it's going to put a lot of people's minds at rest when it comes to something known as acting technique. Which is drilled into us from all different angles, all the time, in different acting classes, whether you've been to drama school or not, various books. You hear things like Meisner, Stanislavski, um, you know, method acting, um, all these kind of, you know, schools of thought. And I don't know if you're like me, but you end up going, what the hell am I supposed to believe? Everyone approaches it differently. Am I supposed to subscribe to this, this, this? And, uh, and you end up reading these books that you don't even understand. I'm going to put my hand up and go, you know what, I've read books on method acting and stuff before. Some of the parts, you know, some of the parts of it, I don't even get it. I do not understand it. For me, it doesn't work for me. I, um, I guess, have created, and I'm sure you have, your own technique as you've gone along the way. And I don't know, you know, I see a lot of people as well who are really hung up on not being at drama school. If you've not been at drama school, just anyone in here, I don't know if you all have, um, are you, is it an issue for you? Do you feel like, oh, I've not been at drama school, so I'm not a real actor, I don't know the real technique? Because I assure you, I went to an awesome drama school for three years, did the degree course there. Do I use the technique today in my acting career that I learned at drama school? I don't know, 10% of it, maybe. The rest of it, I effectively had to forget and reform because it's all based in theatre and I want to work in TV. The technique's completely bloody different. Um, you know, very, very much so. So uh, it doesn't matter. Don't get hung up on whether you've been at drama school or not. Anthony's answer in this is going to be really uh, kind of along that, that, that vein as well. Um, but I know a lot of people that get really hung up on it and they're like, oh, it's something I've got to do because then people take me seriously. Um, I know some fantastic actors who are working super regularly on some of the biggest TV shows in the country who have never been to drama school. They've been to acting class, that's different, and I think everybody should do an acting class, a regular acting class. Everyone should do that. Um, but in terms of a drama school, don't worry about it, the fact you haven't been every day for three years. Um, I'm at uni, not drama school. It's frustrating that we don't get taught TV and film acting. I can't believe that is still the case, Kim, as well, because when I was at drama school 11 years ago, wow, 2005, I graduated from uh, the Capital Theatre, Manchester um, University School of Theatre. Um, in 2005, we had a week in three years that was on TV. The rest of it was uh, was theatre. And that's great if you want to do theatre, but I would got a little bit fed up of theatre by the end of the three years that I'd been there. I was like, you know, I'll go back to it and I, you know, I'm sure I'll enjoy it at some point. But I'm such a geek. I just love I love music and, and cameras and lenses and what you can do with, when you put them all together. That gets me excited. Uh, there's nothing quite like a live audience. I definitely get that. Um, I love that, particularly on stage when things are going wrong or someone forgets something and you've got to muddle through it and you get through it without anybody noticing. I love that aspect of theatre. Um, but it was all about TV for me. Me too, only one week in the whole training, says Warren. It's crazy, I can't believe Warren. It still happens. I don't think until the next generation of actors come through in terms of the current tutors. Because some of my tutors were quite, you know, I don't want to say, well, old. Yeah, they were just, they, you know, it's a fact. They were just, you know, relatively old. They were in their 60s, in their 70s. Um, and uh, he, um, not he, um, they, <laughs> I was thinking of a particular tutor at, at my drama school, um, were very set in their ways about what they taught. And obviously they, you know, they just knew about theatre. So they just taught about theatre. Nina's saying steady. Uh, I'm not ageist, Nina, at all. I just mean in terms of they had, they had taught in that, that environment for maybe 40 years, the same curriculum for 40 years. I don't think they really felt comfortable in going, right, I know all about TV and stuff in this industry, so let's mix it up. They just didn't, they were, they were scared, I think. They brought a couple of TV actors in to teach us for a week, and it wasn't enough for me because I was desperate to learn more about telly. So when I graduated, 
I started doing a weekly acting class, particularly specified just in TV, um, and uh, and that for me worked, you know, worked great. Uh, Lee says Alra based a lot of their training around TV. They do, Lee, absolutely. Um, Kim says she loves theatre, but it's a very specific type of acting. It is, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so don't worry about it. So we're going to look at technique tonight, guys. It's only a six-page chapter. It's not going to be long, but I love it. So Tony starts off with the question. Every chapter is the question he's asking. Um, Verona's here. No worry. She's, I'm watching from the bath. Well, there you go. <laughs> She's like, lie back, Verona. Relax with the bubbles. And we're going to read Tony's answer. Tony Mindel's new book, Book the Effing Job. I'm going to read his answer to how do I develop technique. And I think it's going to liberate you all. So he says, the late, great, four-time Tony Award nominee, Elaine Stritch, says, these performers that go on about their technique and craft, oh, please, spelled P-U-H-L-E-E-Z-E, -E, please, how boring. She says, I don't know what technique means, but I do know what experience is. And this is where I'm so on the same page as Anthony when it comes to this. Um, watching sad movies can give you technique. Volunteering at a soup kitchen or a children's hospital. Realising that in many places in the real world involves surviving mass genocide. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to read this again. Watching sad movies can give you technique. Volunteering at a soup kitchen or a children's hospital. Realising that in many places in the world, life involves surviving mass genocide or war all living on $1.50 a day. Anything that makes you emotionally available and fully present with those feelings and then sharing them is technique. Staying open when you want to shut down is technique. Experiencing your life is technique. End of story. So how do we get to the experience of something that thereby creates technique in our work. So how do we actually have these experiences? So all those experiences, whether it's realising, that kind of shocked me there, again reading that again, that in many places in the world life involves surviving mass genocide, which it does, or living on $1.50 a day, or volunteering at a soup kitchen, or, or you know, or a children's hospital. Um, you know, where do we, uh, where do we get these, you know, these experiences to, you know, to, to evolve into this technique? So Anthony says acting has two parts we can look at. The first is text, or otherwise known as story. And the second is feeling. Okay, so one could argue it's all about behavior, feeling and physicality and our bodies and voice and breath. But feeling is supported by and comes out of our physical being. Um, so uh, Anthony says he's using the broad term feeling. So we've got text and feeling. So text is the story. And then we've got feeling, which is really, you know, your physical, you know, your physical being. Now text without feeling is just saying lines. Got the text, and you, you know, and that's it. You, without the feeling, you're just saying the lines. And Anthony says, ain't nobody got time for that. If I wanted lines with absolutely no empathy, <laughs> compassion or love, I'd just call up my ex-boyfriend. Bam, that's what Anthony says. So Anthony would just call up his ex-fella if he wanted text without feeling, okay? Maybe if you wanted text without feeling, you could phone up your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend as well. Now, on the other hand, feeling without story or without text is just a lot of random emoting. Ain't nobody got time for that either, he says. I'll just watch my favorite um, television program with the sound turned down or go watch an acting class when there's a lot of writhing around on the floor, exercising our demons and getting in touch with our emotional birth canal. Been there, done that, and I'm still not sure any of that has anything to do with feeling or telling story. Except it made me feel icky and weird, self-conscious and indulgent. So feeling itself is also not the answer. Text on its own is just lines. Feeling on its own is just writhing around on the floor in your emotional birth canal. We had to, That's another reason not to go to drama school. God, I had to do that. Not in an emotional birth canal. But I had to writhe around on the floor like in, with a tutor going, Oh, you're, you're an amoeba on the bottom of the sea. I'll put some music on grow towards the light that's like ride around the floor for a bit and then you get on your knees and then you start doing all this i'm like what's this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know jimmy mcgovern's not gonna go ross doing this gritty drama um about drug dealing will you come and sort of do like walk around the street over like to this 
not interested at all. It was very, very self-indulgent. And one girl actually, during the, the debrief at the end, went, oh my God, that was so emotional. For a minute, I actually forgot how to, how to walk. No, you didn't. What a liar. You just wanted attention from the tutors at the end to go, oh, well, you're so in touch with your emotional amoeba. Farcical. Anyway, right, so that would be feeling without text, okay? So the goal of acting and the fulfillment of technique is the ability to use our feelings in a way to tell story without the feeling part getting in the storytelling way. So we need the feeling in order to tell the story, but we don't want the feeling to overtake the story. So he says, or as Academy Award winning, Marion Cotillard says, I don't think you learn how to act. You learn how to use your emotions and feelings. Do you agree? Give me some hearts if you agree. You know, because that's different. That's not like learning a specific technique. So, you, you know, you don't learn how to act. You just learn how to use your own emotions and feelings. Ross Scott Sassy said, Kim, I just, <laughs> I just, I just, there was a few things at drama school that just made me laugh, really, Kim, to be honest. I just thought, what am I doing here? I'm just a normal bloke from a very northern family, and now I'm writhing around on the floor with a load of uh, drama school raw people who were telling me that they've forgotten how to walk. Bullshit. Anyway, so, I've got a few arts there. People, people get that. So, yeah, so Marion says, I don't think you learn how to act, you learn how to use your emotions and feelings. And we do that by feeling and expressing more deep and unfamiliar feeling all the time. More stroppy, I thought, Kim, than Sassy said, Sam. Yes, of course, that's what life experience is. Exactly, Nina. I sometimes have moments like that too, says Kim. Um, so he says, and we do that, yeah, by feeling and expressing more deep and unfamiliar feeling all the time. And while developing ourselves, Stop telling ourselves we can't feel certain things. In our acting and life, just feel it all and see where it goes. So sometimes, you know, well I guess, you know, sometimes you, uh, you might not have felt everything before or you might have a block in the way where you didn't, because you don't want to feel it. Because actually, you know, maybe it reminds you of something else or you actually, you know, maybe you can't feel it because you never experienced it. Um, but Anthony says, you know, just try and feel it. To see where it goes. Teachers say, well, the character wouldn't feel that. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Teachers say, well, the character wouldn't feel that there because that goes against his need. That's a non answer and actually runs counter to the truth of life, says Anthony. We do and feel and express things that contradict our needs all the time. More on that later, he says. Allowing ourselves to truly feel can be hard, and this is why we call it technique. I've often had actors at our studios say that what is being asked of them in class is harder than what they allow themselves to feel in their own lives. Let's go back to what I was just saying there. Might be uncomfortable. That's because in life, we can get away with not feeling. Or we can come up with clever ways to disguise what we're feeling as a default, rationalization or excuse. But telling story through narratives often asks us to confront all feelings head on. One advantage of being an older actor, says Nina, is that I've pretty much experienced most emotions. Exactly, I think that's great, Nina. I think that's what makes you know you a greater actor as, as you progress through life. Um, so yeah, but by telling story through narrative, um, often asks us to confront all feeling head on. By building our emotional facility so that we can feel feeling freely is the goal. And it's also the byproduct of developing emotionally. Some people do this by being in acting classes. Other actors do this by having been on tons of movie sets at an early age and developing emotional availability that way. Others do it by giving themselves the permission to have the experience their way in life and bring that to what they do. It doesn't really matter where you get this experience as Anthony. Of course, I advocate taking acting classes because it's a direct line to getting people to discover who they are and express themselves through storytelling is, cath is cathartic, healing and emotionally empowering. Um, but some people have amazing technique without ever having taken a class. That doesn't make them less of an actor. It shows that our understanding of technique is misinformed and demonstrates that the real meaning of technique is for each of us to be as honest and emotionally available to ourselves as we can be. And when we do that through playing a role, 
we experience how technique supports us. We, each of us, become our own technique. Our hearts, our souls, our pain, our victories, our heartbeats, our love, our passion is what sustains and supports us. That's the real definition of technique and truly all we're ever going to have. And that's his chapter. That's the first question answered. But it's just, it's just a dead short one. We've kind of touched on this on a, on a previous couple of scopes and on the podcast, but just to hit home again, I just wanted people to kind of, you know, to realise that you're working on your technique every second of the day. So sometimes you might feel a bit lazy and you're like, oh God, I've not, I've not been to an acting class in like two weeks or a month or whatever. But I want people to look at what, what you've done instead. And admittedly, if you're just lying in bed watching TV, you're probably not working on your technique unless you had to play a character who lies in bed and watches TV. But if you've been out in the world meeting people, experiencing new things, having new adventures, trying new things out, starting new hobbies, visiting new places, you're consistently working on your technique, even though a lot of people don't realise that's what they're doing. Because like Nina said, the older you get and the more experience you had. Nina, bloody hell, you look at Nina's Facebook, she's always gallivanting somewhere. <laughs> Nina's always off swanning, swanning around, looking glam, going to parties, having meals, in foreign countries on cruise ships, doing adverts or whatever she does. Um, but that's all technique. And that's all, you know, that's all applicable. Um, the role, I brought it up a few times, but that role that I'm, uh, I went for in that drama last year, Nina is bloody glam, says, says Sam, she is, um, that was playing a character with the same eye condition that I've got. Um, you know, m- m- I, there was no amount of technique. The guy who got that role, Adam Long, great actor, but I kind of came in to consult with him really at length on what he would, you know, to how he would portray this character realistically with the condition that I've got that he would never ever, you, unless you've got this, you just don't know what it's like. It would be like me playing a character in a wheelchair and then, you know, and, and you know, I can, I can be in that wheelchair, but I don't know the frustration that that person feels on a daily basis that they can't walk up the stairs, that they go into a building without a lift and they're just like, brilliant, what do I do? Um, you know, so uh, so that experience in life that I had just with living this con- with living in this condition made me, you know, a, a better actor when I was acting. You know, having to act a role like that out, or it made me available to give that experience to another actor to make them better at portraying that as well. Um, you know, so that's just as relevant as me going to an acting class and you know looking at method acting. Everything, every part of your life, I say all the time, affects every part of your life. And it's just, you know, so true. Everything that you're doing, as long as you're trying to build a better version of yourself, you're becoming a better actor, ultimately. Everyone should live a day in a wheelchair. Yeah, I mean, God, I mean, I, I don't know what that must be like. Um, but is it? But is the aim for you to believe it or to make the audience feel? Um, how, how, how do you mean, Sam? So, so well, it's, it's ultimately to make the, you know, to make the audience you know, feel whatever you, you know, you want them to feel. Sometimes, and this really relates to theatre more than TV, when I did do theatre, we do a run of a play, and some nights I would absolutely nail it, and I'd be feeling it, and, you know, I'd truly be there right in the moment, and, you know, and I'd think, wow, great performance, that was great. And then on another night, I wouldn't quite be able to, you know, to put myself in that place again or feel that emotion quite like I did, you know, when, when I really felt it, it was taking me over. You know, did the audience suffer because of that? Not really, because there was only me who knew I wasn't feeling it as much as I was feeling it last week. You know, pretty much I think the performance from an external point of view to watch would have been very, very similar. But I just, you know, I just knew. Um, you know, that maybe it wasn't quite as authentic as it had been a few days ago. Um, and you're never going to get that every single time. When you go for a take, a really emotional take in TV, um, I feel that really, you know, you've got one or two shots at that, at really feeling it for real, where you will break down and, you know, the tears are real and you're shaking for real. And then, you know, you'll get two good goes at that where you can feel that. And then you might have another three or four takes of that scene you know, to just get a few different angles. Well, you're never gonna be able to feel like that again. But the audience don't know that. 
You know, so as long as physically you look like it and maybe you have to use a tear stick to get a few more tears on those take three and four because you're a bit emotionally exhausted and those tears aren't available to you as they were in the first two takes. The audience don't know that they're not real though. You know, so uh, ultimately, I think you can fake it a little bit and you can get away with it. Um, and I think all actors do that. You know, there's, and, and there's been, and there's some great quotes in this book actually, and some really famous actors who um, who talk about stuff like this, um, and they talk about backstory and how on earth you know all the all the demands on you. That's what I'm asking about TV technique, technique and faking. Yeah, totally. Abs you know, absolutely, Sam. Yeah, I think you you know so much can be polished in TV as well. So much emotion can be added with camera angles, with lighting, with music. Um, it makes the actor's job much easier, without a doubt. Um, just on, that's just a fact, 100%. You know, the edit can make you look amazing if you didn't feel you did a particularly good job on the day. Um, you've got to be at a certain level. You can't go and do a shit job <laughs> and not feel it at all. But just because you're not a complete blubbering mess, you know, and you're not really feeling broken, doesn't mean that the audience aren't going to perceive you as, as, as that. Uh, also, what is a tear stick? Because someone poked me in eye. Oh, so tear stick is um, is is great little device, and it's what you'll see. Um, you might think you see a lot of actors on TV and you go, oh my God, look how in control they are of their emotions because they're just about breaking down and they just blink and a single tear rolls down their face and you go, bloody hell, great acting, great acting. What a tear stick does is effectively, it's a bit like Vicks Vapor Rub effectively. You can rub it just under your eyes, just before a take. A lot of girls on set, I'll see, they'll hide one down their bra if they're doing an emotional scene. Uh, you know, they, they'll discreetly Put it under their eyes. It makes your eyes fill up, so you you know it will make your eyes water and fill up. So you can't blink until you're ready to to cry effectively. But it'll be like right, I can feel these tears in my eyes and they're ready to roll. You do your emotional, and you you close your eyes and suddenly the tears are there. Um, and loads of people use it, and it's not frowned upon. You know, it's 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 a great tool for those take threes and take fours and take fives, a really emotional scene where you just, your, your tear ducts are dry. You have nothing left. Um, so it's not a large poke, poke stick in the eye. It's not some, no. Um, you know, it's like, have you ever, have you ever like been putting toothbrush, uh, toothpaste on your toothbrush and flipped the bristles of your brush and it's gone in your eye <laughs> and you get that feeling? Tear sticks like that. It's like that mental kind of minty feeling where you're like, oh God, oh, you're just about to go. Um, so yeah, it's fine, lots of people use it. Um, and it just takes the pressure off an actor as well, so you can actually focus on telling the story as opposed to going into the scene. How many people have, have, have had to go into a scene where you're like, right, I've got to cry in this scene, it says in the script, cries. And then all you can focus on is, if I don't cry, I'm going to look like a shit actor. I'm sure that, that would work though, Sam says, Warren, a poke in the eye. Um, but yeah, who's, you, you will have, I've, I've been in that situation, and then, and then you end up kind of focusing on I've got to cry now, and if I don't, I've failed. I've failed the scene if I don't cry. It takes all that pressure off you. Because like, I know I know visually it's going to look like I'm crying. And all I need to focus on is then is the internals and you know, and come across as authentically as I possibly can. Definitely had that a few times, Edward. It's one of the biggest things. Loads of non-actors, when you go, what do you do? I'm an actor. Cry then. What? They think that that's kind of like the holy grail of being able to act. So can you make yourself cry? That's like the least important thing going. Totally good idea. I always thought I'd hide onion in my brain. In my brain? Do you mean in your bra? <laughs> don't I? <laughs> I don't quite know how you'd fish onion out, out your brain, Sam, on a set without looking a bit weird. <laughs> Sam, what are you doing? Nothing, nothing. It's fishing onion out of my brain. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, that isn't it. You know, people who think, oh, if I'm a good actor if I can cry. Um, it's not, that's not being a good actor. It's all the other things, all the other things that make you a great actor. Um, being emotionally available totally is key, but like I say, after two takes of breaking your heart, you'll find it very difficult on take three and four to feel the same thing. The unnatural you cry here is hard. It's much easier if it's natural and connected. Yeah, and you know what? In times where I've had an audition where I've really had to break down, and I have felt it time and time again, and I have been able to cry, really cry, and I've really felt connected to the piece, um, to the point where sometimes, you know, it's made, I've had one audition, I knew I'd done a cracking job because the casting director reading in opposite me um, couldn't look at me for the last part of the script um, 
and and she has a white tears from her eyes and I thought I've nailed that I've nailed that I've never felt like that before and that was through past experience that was through me relating the script to something that had kind of just happened in my life that was really you know not a great time and was really quite emotional and I was feeling and thinking those things from my own life whilst reading the words of this script so I wasn't connected necessarily to the script as such I was feeling all the emotions from my life and the experience so that wasn't technique that was experience and it was great um, shove it up your nose that will be the onion I think you're talking about there Sam often trying not to cry can be just as powerful well that's the key Nina the key, in life I say this all the time I used to love it I'd sit in as a third year at drama school and I'd sit in on the, on the coming first years you know like the people who were auditioning to be in the first year it's like X Factor it's like two and a half thousand people audition every year and we get to sit in and watch and one thing that I, I saw actors get wrong time and time and time again was the trying to cry. I had that if I can make if I can sit on the floor, rock back and forth, going, "Oh God, you were never there for me," oh, and and cry my heart out and all my you know tears everywhere. Um, they thought that that would make a good actor. In life, the one thing that we try not to do is cry. So if we're in a public space or even just with our friend, and you start to choke up you try so hard not to cry and that's when it becomes so compelling to watch. When you watch somebody telling a true to life story on like 24 hours in A&E and they're talking about, they're, go, they're going back and revisiting that, that accident they had in their head or the time they nearly lost their husband or their wife and they start talking and then suddenly they just, they just literally stop and it goes silent and there's that look on their face of, oh God. And it's a, it's a super interesting moment and you're like, oh please don't cry, please don't cry because you don't want it to cry because it, make, you know, it makes you more emotional then. Um, that's for me what's super interesting. And when an actor can, can recreate that and recreate the breath, you know, when someone's, because you lose your breath, don't you, when you're about to cry. Like, you know, when you're a kid and it's like, you know, it's, it gets you completely. That's the point. Um, Keith Sutherland in 24, says Nina. Um, I've, not, I've only seen season one of 24, Nina. It's about 200 seasons, isn't there? But, um, but yeah, maybe other people will, will know what Nina's on about. But that, for me, is great acting. Not someone who just opens the floodgates and there, there you go. Because we don't do that in real life. It's not very realistic. Nina says YouTube it. I will, Nina, definitely. Um, that, for me, is, is, is really compelling and super interesting to watch because that's what we do you know, in life. Um, I was at a casting with Dan Hubbard a few weeks ago and he was casting a uh, thing for Cancer Research. And part of that casting was to come in and, and tell a story of how you connect to uh, as cancer touched your life, you know, or anyone you know. And people would come in, and, and it was really raw for some people because it was happening to them there and then. Like they didn't have cancer themselves, but their mum did, or their sister did, or their wife did, or whatever. And they had that. They'd start telling a story, and because they were in an audition environment, they felt they had to be dead bubbly and up and like, oh yeah, and I've got this. Oh, it's really relevant actually because at the moment my sister's going through this and she's just had chemo, blah, blah. and there'd be like a moment where it actually be too much for them, and they just ugh, just clam up completely for a second. They go, I'm really sorry, I'm just really sorry. And we just give them a moment to kind of recompose themselves, and it was real. It was raw and it was real. They didn't come in and start going, oh my sister's really ill, oh, you know. Um, because we don't do that. We try, particularly with Brits, don't we? Because we're so stiff up a lip not to show emotion. We try and just be as least emotional as we possibly can. Um, so, you know, if you can bring that into your acting, it's, it's authentic. Um, I think that's, that's really good. Um, but ultimately, yeah, technique. You're going to develop your own technique. Don't get hung up on not going to drama school and learning all the famous techniques. Definitely, as Anthony says, you know, I, I, I agree, you know, do a regular acting class because that's a safe environment for you to test stuff out in. Um, but ultimately, get out there and get as much life experience as you can because it's that that you're going to be able to bring into your work that's going to make you a better actor. Like I say, if I hadn't have had that bad experience that I could draw on to break down in the audition, there's no way that casting director would have been crying. No way. Because I'd have been able to do an alright job of it, but you know, I could use my experience to do a great job of it. So the more experience you can have, and it sounds crazy, but and don't go and have purposely bad experiences, but you'll probably learn way more from your bad experiences in life than you do from your good experiences in life. Because when you get a script that goes, Ross is very happy today, that's pretty simple, isn't it? 
that's quite easy to to express a happy emotion it's those scripts that you get where it says sobbing uncontrollably you know or you know trying not to cry holding back the tears they're the scenes where you're like shit how do i play this but if you've had those experiences you'll know what that's like you'll know that feeling of like you know when you get bad news or you've lost somebody that feeling in your stomach of being winded when someone tells you your parent has died i don't know about you but i didn't cry for quite a bit when my dad passed away my mum got a phone call and we were expecting the hospital to say oh your dad's been moved to such and such a ward oh your husband's been moved to such and such a ward my mum picked up the phone and they didn't it was a guy on the end of the phone in broken english he just said um, your husband had a heart attack in the ambulance we, we brought him back and we got him back to the hospital um, he had another heart attack on the way to the theatre and now he is dead and that's so shocking you don't go Whoa! like someone would do in an audition if the police came and knocked on someone's door and said somebody's died most actors would go right but that, that's the point where I break down and I just crumble completely Shock is a really funny thing. It doesn't you don't do that. It took me quite a while for it to even sink in. I was just utterly gobsmacked. Um, and like you have that oh shit, what am I gonna kinda do for you? You feel like you've been punched in the stomach, like you're winded and you can't get your breath. You don't break down completely. Um, and when I did uh, something called Accused, Jimmy McGovern wrote Accused, and um, I had to go around as a copper and tell um, a, uh, a couple in the show that their son had died. Peter Capaldi and Juliet Stevenson and they played it perfectly because they didn't I'm like you know unfortunately you know he, he, he's, he's passed away and she played it and like what like what where is he he's in the hospital like can I go and see him like she she wasn't even accepting that he was dead she was like thinking I just said he's still he's still all right he's still around um, he's just in the hospital I'd actually told her that that he died but she hadn't computed it um, and it was Peter his character was like no look he's, he's dead but he was like what you know what's happened he didn't he didn't just break down completely as well, which most actors would fall into that trap of doing, but it's not authentic, it's not real. Now you would only know that if you'd have been in that situation or had a bad experience that's similar that you can draw on. So it's all about experience. Don't go and kill your family so you can have that experience. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just get as much experience as you can. It's gonna make you a better actor. Um, so I hope that makes sense, guys. Let's choose the question that we're going to look at on next week's book club because we've got three more chapters we're going to look at on this you should get this though seriously it's a really good book um it's about 12 quid on amazon if you're watching this on the replay the link to buy the book on amazon is just underneath this video uh, if you're watching this on that's on this tv if you're watching it on youtube click on the link to the blog post which will be under this video then click on the link under that video which will be to amazon um, but let's have a vote because there's so many questions so we've looked at a question from the head should we look at a question from the heart next week and I'll give you three, three. well, I'll just read a couple out, actually, and just see, uh, see what the votes are. So for the question from the heart, there's loads of them. How do I become more vulnerable? Uh, Santa's totally, I was only one in hospital room holding my granddad's hand as he died, gasping for breath. Yeah, and you're, you know, I mean, and that, that's an experience I've never had, Sam. Um, you know, I've never been there when someone's passed away, but that's something that you're, you know, if you ever got that, that scene to do where you know, you're with a loved one as they pass away, you could draw on that experience and it'd be so authentic. And not only that, you'd be able to consult with the other people who were in the scene as well maybe, tell them your experience so they, if they haven't had that experience, can still draw on your experience. Um, so it's so valuable. Whereas if you'd not had that experience, you'd be guessing um, and it might not play true, you know, so ultimately it's not the technique that you need to be focusing on, it's your experience in life and just keeping your eyes open whenever you're out and about so you see and hear and feel everything that you can possibly feel. So we've got the heart questions are, how do I become more vulnerable? How do I start recognising how I really feel? How can I be kinder and less judgmental with myself? That's a good one. How do I know if I'm surrendering fully? Why is rejection such a big deal? What am I so scared of? What happens when life imitates art and I start to have feelings for my co-star? <laughs> That's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. What happens when I just start fancying my co-star? Wow. How do I deal with doing a romantic scene when I'm in a real life relationship? Kim's voting for kinder. How can you be kinder to yourself? What do I do when people a spouse or partner want to talk to me about my process or what I'm doing on set and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so when someone goes, how was it today? And you can't be bothered telling them. 
How can I maintain my life as an artist while being fulfilled in a relationship that doesn't support my artistry? Wow. So if you've got a husband or spouse or wife or whatever who doesn't get your job, how can you make it all work? Um, what do I do if a scene I'm working on is triggering long-stored trauma that I haven't yet dealt with in my real life? God, there's loads. Any of these that are sticking out for you that you'd really like us to look at? Kim wants to look at um, how can I be kinder and less judgmental with myself? But anybody else got any, any ones? Why are these all about relationships in the industry? It's Anthony Mindel. He's obviously had a lot of relationships in the industry, this kid. He's dead funny. Follow him on Instagram. He did, a, he did like a Tinder experiment once, um, which is hilarious. Uh, where he would just basically, he would go on dates with all these guys and then he would just like review them on, on his Instagram <laughs> after he'd been on it. Knowing what you feel, says uh, says Warren. Knowing what you feel, which one was that one? How do I... Which one was that, Warren? Uh, how do I know if I surrender myself fully? Uh, what happens when life imitates art? What do I do if a scene I'm working on is triggering long stored trauma? Uh, what do I do when people have some spouse on? How do I deal with doing a romantic scene? What's the feel one? What's the feel one, Warren? Have I missed it? How do I become more vulnerable? We've, we've uh, said, how do I start recognizing? Oh, how do I start recognizing how I really feel? Verona wants rejection. Well, we've got three weeks, so we can look at three of these. Um, let's, let's. How do we do this then? Because we've got three different answers. Perfect example of someone confused. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's how I can draw on that experience there. So I'm being confused. And then if I ever have to play confused in a scene, I'll just come back to this periscope again and go, when Warren was talking about that question, how, and I couldn't read it on the book, how, how did I really feel? So we've got, so there's three there that people want to look at then. How can I be kind to myself? Um, how do I start recognising how I really feel? And then what was the other one? The feeling one, Nina says the feeling one, right, okay, so that's two votes, and then we'll look at the other one that someone mentioned um, the week after or something like that. Okay, cool, so next week then we're gonna look at how do I start recognizing how I really feel? That's an interesting one. Let's just have a little quick look at that, that's page 90. How do I start recognizing how I really feel? Oof, we always recognize how we feel, apparently. Always. What we choose to do is ignore it or shove it down or repress it or deny it. Dun, dun, dun. And there's another four and a half pages on that. So there's a little cliffhanger. So the actual kind of answer is that we always recognize how we feel. But if you're confused about how you really feel, boom. How are you masking it? How are you denying it? How are you blocking it? That's an interesting one. So, uh, so we'll look at that, guys. Uh, so, like I say, yeah, if you want to get the book, get it. It's on Amazon right now, and there's not an audio book of this available, but he is recording one, and uh, so you will be able to get the audio book at some point. There is an audio book recording of his other one called Alphabet Soup for uh, Alphabet Soup for Grown Ups, which is another great read. It's a really, really good one. Um, he takes a letter of the alphabet A to Z, and um, and it's got these great little. Uh, uh, illustrations in it and uh, each chapter is like be more oh, look at that be more like Scooby-Doo yes, that's, that's for me I think people do mask a lot of feelings we definitely do Warren without a doubt without a doubt um, I'm masking my feelings right now and I, and I that's a feeling of confusion and I'm, when you know, I was reading that question out and I was trying not to look confused but um, Sam saw right through me and saw me for what I was highly confused at reading a book um, so awesome so yeah think about that one um, if you're not, oh guys, I'm loving Snapchat. If you're not on Snapchat, get Snapchat. What's Sam saying? Come on, Ross, use those phonic sounds to pronounce your grown up words. Yeah, no, I know. I'm supposed to be a voiceover artist. I'm supposed to have very good control over my voice. And yeah, I can't even read. Um, yeah, are you on Snapchat? Who's on Snapchat? Get on Snapchat. Because it's just great. Um, I'm doing loads of like, behind the scenes stuff. So, like, you know, snapping here when I'm getting ready for things. Snapping things when I'm doing voiceovers, when I'm out and about. I'll snap, introduce people, you know, if I meet someone interesting. I'm going to be filming some great uh, new features and I'm going to do all loads of behind the uh, scenes Snapchat stuff on that. Verona follows us. Verona is top, in it? It's really, really good. Get on it, Warren. Snapchat, get it, get on it. If you've got an iPhone, 
guess you can get it on Android. Um, and yeah, and follow me at Ross A. Grant. Um, just follow me, and I'll follow you back and stuff like that. It's just really funny. Was on it once. A guy started sending me topless pics. Now there is that, but it's changed a lot since the, those days. A couple of years ago, it was definitely just used for sending mucky pics for ten seconds to each other. Um, Kim follows media, or do I follow? Or you've been Verona? Um, so it was definitely a bit rude a few years ago. Now Lee's responsible for this because he showed it me a few weeks ago where you can create a story so your actual snaps aren't just 10 seconds long and then gone. They're available for 24 hours and you can create as many as you want within that period. And then you can follow someone's story literally their entire day. It's like having like a reality show <laughs> of your own um, where you can just let people into your life and you know, it's just funny sometimes. Oh, you follow me, so Kim follows me. Excellent, Kim, good work. Uh, well, I'll try and like be more entertaining and stuff. I'm just kind of getting used to it. Um, but get on it. I'm telling you, it's going to be the future of, of like distribution, the future of how we're going to start you know, consuming content. Um, it will be in 20 years' time. Snapchat, Instagram, they're going to be BBC One and BBC Two. BBC One and BBC Two, as they are today, they'll be like on in the background. Everything will be on, on your phone. Uh, you guys need to follow me. We'll follow you as well, Kim. As long as you're dead interested and doing really cool stuff. Otherwise, delete. Just joking. Um, so yeah, get on it. It's great. It's really, really good. Um, and post in the Facebook group if you are on it. Post like your username and stuff, and we'll get everyone in the group to follow each other. Maybe we can start. Actually, you can't start a group like like a WhatsApp group. You can't start that on Snapchat. Maybe they'll do that in the future. That'd be really cool. What's your handle, Kim? Kim R. Hunt. What's your name on there? Everybody's asking Kim. What is your name? Tell me what your name is. Um, and uh, everybody follow Kim. No pressure, Kim. And when we all start following you, that you've got to actually be dead entertaining. Um, and we will be reviewing you on the next Periscope for how entertaining your Snapchat has been <laughs> throughout this week. Um, Skittle. Oh, you're Skittles. Skittles 89. I'm saying, I think I'm following Skittles, aren't I? Um, mine is Trey Small, says Lee. Trey Small. Because he's very small. He's not very small. He just says he tells himself he's very small. Really, he's just, you know, just quite normal. But he's Trey Small. I think that's French in it for very. Tre Trez. I don't know. Trez and me. Shampoo. Um, right, I'm going, guys. But yeah, get on Snapchat. Oh, and also, if you want to be the first to know about the. Um, I have a casting tomorrow with a cat. Is that interesting enough? Nina, that's great. Get that on Snapchat. 100%. Um, yeah, if you are, uh, if you want to find out about these new features that I'm doing, I'm doing some super, super cool, brand new features from Media City. Um, go to actonthis.tv forward slash first, F-I-R-S-T, first, and then leave your email address under the little sneak peek video that I posted today. Um, these features are going to be great, and there will come a time where these features are going to be like live and in person. Already done that, says Nina. Warren's already done that. Boom, excellent. Um, yeah, everybody else do that, because um, I'm going to be sending emails out soon, well, about a week or so, um, giving you even more information on those. But they uh, they will be great features, and like I say, at some point, they will become um, interactive, where you'll actually be there, like in person, not just live on the internet, actually right there. Uh, which is good. I'm in the. Um, am I in the Facebook group? Not sure if it's the right one. Facebook.com Verona forward slash groups forward slash Act on This TV. Jen is in the house. Jen, you're well late, or have you been watching on Twitter or summer? You've missed the book, but you can go back and watch the replay literally straight away after this on Periscope. Um, you can watch the uh, the replay. Met Chris on Saturday. Oh yeah, you did, Warren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the uh, at the workshop. Yeah, uh, the acting mechanics stuff. Awesome. That's uh, that's good. Yeah, Jen, you should get on these periscopes more often. You've, you've come on right at the bloody end, love. Why, what, what are you playing at? It's Ten to eleven. We've been on for forty-nine minutes. Um, but yeah, get yourself on next time. But you can watch the replay where I read some of Anthony Mindell's book, The Effing Job Book. Um, filmed my real scene last week. Yeah, you did, Chris. Uh, so Sam says you filmed a show real scene with Chris Stone last week as well. He said you did. That all went really well. He said it would have been a dead quick scene, easy scene, if it hadn't kept raining all summer. Because um, it was after that where he came to meet me to do the little recce at Media City to figure out how we're going to do these features. Um, so, oh no, not you, Jennifer Hannah. Jen Ladisco came on. Oh, you're talking to me? I've been on stage feeling stuff. Excellent, Jen. 
<laughs> no, Jen Ladisco uh, came on a minute ago as well, Jen. <laughs> but Jen's been on uh, on stage. That's, that's awesome. That's really good. You should per- you should put your phone on the in, in the wings, Jen, and you can periscope to us your show. Uh, that would be quite quite cool. Oh, also, guys, last thing, and this is the last thing before I go. I'm thinking of dual broadcasting, so I might get my iPad and I will go. I will do these scopes, but we'll have my phone here, my iPad here, and on my phone will periscope, and on my iPad will do Facebook Live. So people can tune in via the Facebook page um, and via Periscope. What do you think of that? Good or not? Um, might be interesting to get more people involved. Um, using a personal experience as well, which is very close to the story. Good work, Jen. That's real technique right there. That's what I'm talking about. Sam is now channeling the Ross confused face. Good idea, says Nina. So you can do Facebook Live now, Sam. You might not know about it, but you can broadcast live video directly to Facebook. You can do it as an individual, but I don't know if I can do it from the Facebook page, so it might have to go through my personal account at the moment, but I'm hoping they're going to let you broadcast via a Facebook page or group, um, in which case it would be really cool, would, would be much better. But yeah, going to give that a little test. I can't Snapchat at the same time, Lee. That would be too much, mate. <laughs> but yeah, we can definitely uh, Facebook Live and Periscope at the same time. That might be cool. Might be a great idea because Periscope can sometimes be a dick. Uh, yeah, it can. It can kick people off sometimes. So yeah, it might be a good idea. And it also means people within the Facebook group um, who don't know about Periscope, I still post to it as often as I can about these scopes. Um, but they might see what we're doing as well. Um, thanks everyone as well for posting in the Facebook group. Keep that up. Thanks everybody for welcoming new members to the group. We're over a thousand strong now in the Facebook group already. Already, it's taken about five weeks. We've already got over a thousand members in there. If we carry on the way we're going. By the end of the year, we'll have like ten thousand members, which would just be amazing. Hopefully, they would all be positive, inspired people as opposed to whinging bastards. <laughs> like another Facebook groups that are 10,000 strong. But um, but yeah, we've got 1,000 strong and I've not seen like any whinging, any moaning, nothing but nice, positive folk in the Facebook group right now. So that's wicked. And no whinging, says Nina. Exactly. Um, Sam does a great job of promoting the scopes. You do, Sam. Thanks so much for that. Keep doing that. Spreading the word. Share them on all your social media. Um, you know, every, I just appreciate everything everybody's doing. Um, people are leaving uh, reviews on the podcast on iTunes now as well. Search for Act On This TV on iTunes. Download the weekly Five to Thrive podcast. Um, and everyone's been nominating me for a TED Talk as well, which is wicked. Just saw that come as well, which is great. Um, in the part in the part on the nomination form, it says, "What will Ross talk about?" I don't think you have to fill that in. Um, there's so many things I like to talk about, but one of my one of my big things is turning adversity into advantage. That would be like, you know, maybe like the, the, the title, you know, um, how to turn adversity into advantage, because there is always advantage where there is adversity, even if you don't think you can see it. If you look hard enough, you'll find it. Um, awesome. Um, so good. Yeah. So nominate me. I bloody love it. If, you did, if I did a TED Talk, I'd invite you all. You could all be in the audience. It would just be insane. Like, it's one of my life goals to do a TED Talk. One here, and then I have to go over to the States and do a big one with like the President of the United States on the front row when they do the big TED Talks. And they have like everyone who's everybody in the audience that would just be unbelievable we will make it happen um, awesome right i'm going now guys i'm going to drink the rest of my coffee upload this thanks for spending all this time with me go and get some sleep um, and remember yeah acting technique you're acquiring technique every single day that you are alive in one shape or another so ultimately stay alive for as long as you can Sam says, can we discuss the 10K? Yes, we can soon. We'll definitely discuss that on the Facebook group. That's absolutely fine. We'll do that. If you want to run the Manchester 10K with our group from Acts on This, then, uh, well, join us. I hope you can. Everyone's invited. Excellent. Cheers, Verona. Uh, Good to see you. Have a blessed rest of the week, she said, everybody. Um, Absolutely. And I'll be back um, on Monday with Mind Acts and Motivation. But before that, Friday, the new podcast on iTunes will be up. Go to iTunes, search for Acts on This TV. All one word download all the five to thrive episodes five minutes you will be thriving <laughs> right i'm out of here guys pleasure to see you all oh i broke my phone again come on there you go periscope excellent guys goodbye bye bye night for now bye for now all that jazz Ta-ra.